Hello again folks, it's Mr. Pete, your YouTube shop teacher, and this is tips number 789 entitled Making Improvements to the South Bend Milling Attachment. This was given to me by John Collins. You have seen that in a series that I've been making here. But this particular one, and my dad had one exactly like this years ago. They were made in six sizes, which I'll show you in a second here. But this one is missing both the crank that goes on the top and the jaws that belong in here. They're veed machine jaws, so I'm going to make those and uh, that's what this video is all about. Be sure and watch a follow-up video where I talk about all of the different milling attachments. I think I have three or four of them that fit on my various machines, so I'll compare those. But let's take a look in that catalog right now. Here it is in the 1956 catalog. Notice that it has a crank on the top. It's a pretty small crank but since I do not have any stock to make that or anything to adapt, I'm going to use simply a cast iron knob, which will work quite nicely. Also in this picture you can see that there are two jaws, movable jaws, and that's what I'm going to make also. And here's another view, a close-up of the two jaws. As I said here, they made these in six different sizes, and I own the smallest one here that fits the 9 and the 10 inch light. It was $49 then. Notice that it weighs 13 pounds right here, and that they make, again, a bunch of other sizes here. So the, the largest one that fits the 16 inch lathe weighs 65 pounds, so you can imagine that that's a pretty big attachment. And for only $6 extra, you could buy this beautiful little milling attachment treasure chest. Well, this is the Atlas Craftsman milling attachment. And notice that there are two little jaws. These are the originals. One of them has V's in both directions. The other does not. Now, these are two and a half inches long. Just a little bit too short to use in the South Bend which happens to be three inch, but of course they really would fit. They're three quarters by quarter inch thick. Well, it just so happens I've got some three quarter wide by three eighths thick cold drawn steel, so that's what I'm going to use. So I'll cut two pieces of this off camera that are three inches long rather than two and a half. I won't show that and then we'll get started with a little milling. There's just not a whole lot to do on this project. This will be covered in other videos, but the South Bend uses this round dovetail to go into the cross slide. Here's another compound from a 9 inch showing you that it's exactly the same, although this one is pretty beat up. Well, the material is prepared 3 inches long, deburred, and I put some layout die on it and a center line, although there's actually no need for a layout at all because I'm going to locate the cutter just on the center that is three-eighths from the side. And I'll show you that real quickly over on the bridge board. But first, this is the milling cutter that I'm going to use. It is 90 degrees. It is solid carbide. These are kind of costly. You have seen me use this in other videos. It's uh, called a drill mill, 90 degrees. The work is mounted on a parallel. This is an edge finder, and it's 200 diameter. That's 100 thousandths radius. The width of the work here is 750, so half of that is 375 plus the 100 for a total of 475. So I'll touch off and then move the table 475 in the y-axis. Okay, I'll put the cutter in and I'm ready to cut. I want to mill about 150 or 60 thousandths deep. That'll give me a V-groove approximately one-fourth wide. It doesn't really matter. So I'm touching off, locking the quill, and I will need to take fairly light cuts, 
because of the type of cutter that it is. So I won't show it all. I'll start out with just ten thousandths to see what it's doing. Make that twenty. This is the finishing pass, an extra ten thousandths deep for a total of one hundred and fifty thousandths. Well, that completes number one. I'll do the other one off camera, but let me say there are other ways of doing this if you do not have a cutter like that. And one would be to tilt the head, nod the head, or hold the work at an angle and use a regular end mill. So there's lots of ways of doing it. I think some of those ways were shown in other chapters or other videos. Okay, the jaws are completed. Some nice V-ways in there. Now, I will admit that this cutter is probably being misused for what I just did because, in fact, this type of cutter, as I said before, plows through at the actual point. It isn't capable of cutting right there on the end. So, in some ways, it's kind of rough, but it doesn't matter for this project. It just really doesn't matter. But the better way of doing it would be to have a cutter like this. Now, this one is 60 degrees, but you can buy them in 90, but I do not own one. But that would give you an awful nice cut on the horizontal mill, and that's really the correct tool. I just wanted to, to make that clear before we go any farther. Now, it isn't absolutely necessary to use both jaws. One can be used in a manner like this, with round work, something like that, and tighten the screws down. In other words, just use this as the platen rather than another flat one, but that could be done too if you were a little afraid of damaging the attachment but didn't mind hitting the uh, V-block here because in some ways this could be consumable. It is not hardened. And this is just one example of how work could be held in uh, this little attachment. And we could cut a keyway or put a flat on there or whatever we needed to do. Alright, we're done with the jaws. Let's talk about the handle. As I mentioned earlier, there was a small crank that fitted over this half-inch rod and had a slot in here, and that would have been used to raise and lower this slide. And there's a graduated collar there. Well, I don't have that little crank. It's probably been lost uh, before Truman was in office. But I'm going to use this little cast iron knob that I had in stock. The diameter here isn't very critical because we're just going to raise and lower in a manner like that. So in fact this knob here isn't a whole lot smaller than the hand wheel here on the Atlas Craftsman attachment. So I'll go over to the lathe and I'm going to drill this out half inch. I don't think there's a need to ream it. And then we have a little slot to cut right here so that it will actually intermingle with this pin and drive it and can easily be taken off. Let's make some chips. A couple of quick measurements here. The stem here is three quarters of an inch. The diameter of it, as I said before, is half inch and the diameter of this little pin here is three sixteenths. And I'll measure the, the distance down here later on. Not quite ready for that. Let's go over to the lathe. Alrighty, I'll start by opening up that hole to half inch. Okay, the knob fits just fine. And I've already laid out a red mark there, so I will take it to the milling machine and it will mill a slot, that's 3 16 
and I'm just going to go through one wall although it wouldn't hurt if I went all the way across because I think the crank does but it doesn't really matter with this so let's go to the bridge port I'm not going to show how I center this because it's very similar to what I did earlier in the video okay I'm ready to mill that is a 3 16 end mill Let's see if it fits. Well, I hope it fits. Well, you know it will, or I wouldn't be showing you this. And it can be taken on and off with ease. Very good fit. And you can see that's going to work just fine when I actually use this attachment to raise and lower it. One other thing that might need to be done on this is there is no lock on here as such for cutting like there is on many of the other ones, for instance, on the Atlas. Well, I'm not going to worry about that now because how often will I actually use this? Well, that concludes this video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. This is Mr. Pete, your YouTube shop teacher.